Karma has finally caught up with all those Boston franchises. They are title town for a reason. They've got loads and loads of championships. We've all sat here and had to witness it. The Tom Brady's, the Boston Red Sox, the Boston Celtics, as we know, have 17 titles. Well, if you remember this past year, the Boston Celtics acquired Kyrie Irving from the Cleveland Cavaliers. And a few years before that, Danny Ainge pulled the wool over Billy King's eyes and stole five years' worth of first-round picks for aging, washed-up superstars. Well, you figured with the trade to get Kyrie Irving and the signing of Gordon Hayward, Boston was favorites to win it in the East. Kyrie just had injuries, and, and they got off to a great start. They were cooking. I mean, they've got 53 wins. They looked like a sure, sure win to make it to uh, the title. But Kyrie went out with injury. He had to have something removed from his knee. Only figured he'd be out three to six weeks. No big deal. He missed the rest of the season. Well, news just broke now that he has to have a second surgery done to his knee to have screws removed from his patella from the 2015 NBA Finals. So this puts a damper on Boston fans' chances of winning another title because their best player is going to be out. They lost Gordon Hayward to that horrific injury earlier in the season, the first five minutes. We all saw it on national TV. It was horrific. Well, this is a huge blow to the Celtics because... Kyrie is the engine that makes them go, makes their offense go. He is their prolific scorer. He's their main guy. The offense runs through him. And now when you lose him, who do you got to lead on? You've got a bunch of youngsters and a couple of vets sprinkled in there, but nobody that can really take over a game like Kyrie Irving. Uh, so he's due to miss, I think, four to five months is the recovery time to have those screws removed. So that's just a bad blow, but... The devil has come to collect, Boston. I hate to say it. But the reason I make this interesting video is because this could benefit the Sixers and makes that game tomorrow against the Cleveland Cavaliers even more paramount than what we thought. We're fighting for the third seed, of course. So you look at our schedule. We've got four games left, so does Cleveland. They have the Wizards tonight us on Friday, and then they finish out the season with the Knicks. So we need them to lose, uh, obviously, tonight and tomorrow, and I don't know if the Knicks can possibly get one or two, at least one win against them. That would really help us out because if we get the third seed, then we face Miami. Boston then faces the Wizards. The Wizards are a team that really scares me because I don't know if we can really stop their two guards. Their two-guard combination is, I think, second best to... Lillard and McCollum out there in Portland. But the way they can penetrate and, and move the ball, the Wizards really scare me as a team, and I think they could really give the Sixers fits. But Brad Stevens is a basketball genius down there. Even though he just lost their best player, he could figure out ways to get wins. I mean, he, I mean he's great. And you talk about Popovich, Brad Stevens has got to be up there with Popovich. So if they happen to take them out, Cleveland goes down to four. They deal with Indiana. LeBron has to deal with his old foe, his old rivalry when he was with Miami facing the Pacers. Deal with Lance Stevenson. They can have a slugfest and knock each other out. Then in turn, we make it to the second round, and we would face Boston. Well, if that's the case, I think my math's right. If, that's the, if we do make it to the second round, we face Boston. Kyrie Irving's not there. We could slaughter him. That's an easy walk to the Eastern Conference Championship where we would probably face Cleveland. But by winning this, by, we have to win out, obviously, for the rest of the year so we can get that three seed for all this to come to fruition. This could be a, a walk into the finals, guys, because Boston was another team that really scared me. We didn't play well against them this year. They had our number. I think we got one win against them. The Wizards are 2-1 and one against them this year as well. So they could give them fits. But being a 53-win team, getting to the second seed like they did, losing Kyrie Irving, if you shut him down, they have no offense. They struggle to score. They're really a defensive team. They they get, turn, you know, get points off of turnovers, so on and so forth. But Kyrie's a guy that can really take over a game, get you back in the game. He's the spark to give that engine... You know, an extra oomph to really get you back 
into a game if you're down a lot. He has taken over some games that I've seen, even in the finals when he was with LeBron. He's a guy that can go off of ISO. You know, he, he can get it off his defense. He can shoot. He He's made it over three guys before. I mean, the guy is a complete freak. Definitely top three player in the league. But... With him being out, Gordon Hayward being out, you're looking at a, a bunch of youngsters that haven't been in that moment. We've got a veteran presence. This would be the perfect situation for the Sixers to possibly make a finals run this year. I know I'm trying to, do, you know, getting a little ahead of myself, but look at this situation, the way the pieces all fell. This might be the Sixers' years, guys. With this news not being great because I don't like to see anybody hurt. Sucks for Boston, but I like to rub it in because I can't stand Boston. Because you guys have so many titles, so of course I'm going to be salty about it. But with him going down, this could be the chance for the, e or the Eagles, where the Sixers could walk the Easter, the Easter Conference Finals and then get into the Finals. Because I think we e easily could beat Cleveland. When we get Embiid back, when he's healthy... I want to get ahead of myself. We could take down the Heat if we get that third seed. This is what makes this game so important tomorrow night to be able to play as a team. Got to shut down LeBron. He's playing with a newer squad when they made all those trades to get younger, and they haven't played really well. If we could get lucky, even though we, we lost our best player, with team camaraderie and the way this team has been playing, They've gelled. They're playing great defense. Our shots are going down. We're scorching hot from downtown. It just We got a swag about us that you can't knock us off our pedestal. So we're going to have confidence coming into tomorrow night that we can take down the King because we can. If we have been playing like the past 12 games with these wins, there's a very good chance we can make it to the Eastern Conference Finals and then get to the Finals. Now, I, I'm cliche, and I like to take it game by game, but it, it is so important that we get this win tomorrow night, and a little luck falls our way, too, with the Knicks hopefully being able to defeat Cleveland, and we get that third seed instead of battling for the fourth. But we're going to get home court advantage. We know that. That's for sure. There's not enough games in the season for us to move up to number two seed or even the number one, but we get Miami in the first round. We've seen what we dealt with them. We can deal with them. We've played great against them. I think we've, we're 3-1 and one against them this season. So that would move you on to the second round. Okay. Boston takes care of business with the Wizards, hopefully, even though they struggle with them this season. Takes care of that. That knocks out one of the foes that we were afraid of playing because of their guard play. Okay, you look at Boston. Youngsters haven't been there. Great coach. Don't have their superstar. You get up late in the game, nobody on that team really scares you that can really spark that energy to get them back into it. Jason Tatum could be that guy at some point, but not in his rookie season, not now. He's not going to be able to take on that burden, put that team on his back, and lead them all the way to a victory in a seven-game series. This is fantastic news. Sucks for Boston. I don't like to see anybody get hurt. It's just you know, bad luck. For Boston, going down with Gordon Hayward and now with Kyrie Irving. But, hey, man, the Devils come to collect, Boston. All them championships in all these years by getting Tom Brady, pulling the wool over Billy King's eyes, and taking all those draft picks from Brooklyn. You know, it, it, it was only a matter of time that your comeuppance was, was due. And he came to collect. So Kyrie Irving out for four to five months. That fortifies that Boston maybe makes it to the second round, but they don't get any further than that. And the Sixers could easily slide right in here, face Cleveland in the Eastern Conference Finals, guys, and have a chance to go to the NBA Finals for the first time since 2001. So this is Kyle Gaffner with the Bitter Birds. What do you guys feel? Do you think I'm being a little too optimistic, or is there a really great chance that we get there this year. We still got that magic element from the Eagles. Look at Villanova. Is it the Sixers' turn now to collect three in a row for 2018? It's been a great year so far. It's been a great year. And I think the stars are aligning. Everything's falling into place. And it could easily happen, guys. Joel Embiid gets into a groove. Ben Simmons is playing out of his mind. And if we do face... 
LeBron James. Now reports were just kind of speculating about LeBron coming. Now you're hearing it being talked about on first take. You've heard C.J. McCollum talking about it. Uh, you know, maybe it's catching some steam. This opens LeBron's eyes on where do I want to go? The best trio in the NBA right now, the best team. They've got cap space. If we do sign LeBron, though, what happens to J.J. Redick? And then does this stronghold the organization on possibly losing a Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, Markel Fultz, Dario Saric? Because you can't pay everybody. That's four potential with those four guys I just mentioned, other than, other than Dario, to get in four max deals, you, you're not going to be able to keep everybody. So is it going to be worth it to possibly sign LeBron, keep him for his his golden years, paying him whatever he's going to demand, and losing one of our younger superstars? I don't know. And that's if he decides to stay in these, which I think he will. I think it's between us and Cleveland – Potential to go out west and play with Houston, but it's a lot harder road. LeBron's played here his entire career here in the East. Uh, it's easier. He's chasing that goes to MJ. Uh, this makes the most sense. But is it worth it, y'all, to sign LeBron? And it, it's not guaranteeing. It's not going to guarantee us a championship. He has been to seven NBA Finals. He might get us there, but is he going to? be enough to get us over that hump to beat, let's say, Houston or the Golden State Warriors. I don't know. That's a decision for the Sixers brass to make, but it's fun to talk about. All right, this is KG on BB. Y'all leave it in the comment section. What do you think? Sucks for you, Boston, but Philly is here to take it. Go Sixers! Peace.